I'm going to attempt to remove this water pump that's locked up here, attached to the fan. Uh, I got it sprayed down, but I think we need to drain the engine of any coolant if it has any. So right down here, there's a petcock valve right there. We need to get rid of this uh, dabber nest. Bye bye. Oh, well, there's something coming out. All right, well, I guess there is some coolant in there. John, focus. See how clear that is? All right, well, we'll let this drain out. All right, it's still draining. Let's see if I can't get this thing to come loose. All right, there's one. Oh, there it went. Nice. All right, that one. Almost dropped a wrench. But that one's coming out too. It really helps that I've been spraying these things down for over a month. Get out of my way, you stupid belt. Hey, at least this belt still has some numbers on it so we can easily find what we need at the parts door. There it is. That's all four bolts out. Give this thing a little wiggle. Well, it's like it wants to spin there, but I ain't gonna spin, I know that. Alright, battery and the camera is getting low, but there's not enough room for this water pump to come out with the fan on, so the fan disc has to come off first. And there's bolts on the front of it. I did put the top bolt back in the water pump to hold it in place. Well, check out this fun. After playing around with this, I got the water pump loose. But it's fried anyway, so we're going to change it. Alright, I sprayed some stuff on there. Get this with the hammer. And there's our fan disc coming out. Looks like a little stick guy. Okay. Got the bolt. Ah. There's our water pump. All rusted bad. Alright, see if we can go to the parts store and get a new one of them. Next project, we're going to get this carburetor off of here. See if we can't find some numbers on it. Try and get a rebuild kit. First thing we're going to do is take off all these vacuum lines. And get those off. Got the fuel line. That one down there off too, although it's not really hooked to much at the moment because the fuel lines are junk. I'll loosen up that screw right there. This is for the choke. And that lets the whoop, falling through the fender here. That lets this choke come loose. Choke cable. Oh, well, looks like there's a nut on the bottom of that. But that's alright as long as that moves. I think I'm going to have to hold that somehow, keep it from spinning. So we can slide that choke cable out, although it probably needs to be replaced anyway. I don't know why there's two here. Maybe that one was junk at some point or for something else. Oh, it could be a throttle lock. I got that bottom screw loose and that choke cable can pull out and get that out of the way. So the throttle linkage is a little screwed up here. Needs a new ball and seat. Not sure where we're going to be able to find that at, but I'm sure it's out there somewhere. I know this is a little hillbilly rig here that I was like that when I got it and then I reinforced it with some heavier stuff. Alright, that's off. We are going to take that the ball off of there too. I think this whole seat thing needs to be changed as well, but we'll see if we can't get it. This is kind of a genius design I have here. They got the choke linkage right here, and there's a bolt when you take the carburetor off right underneath it. Thanks. International. Unless this is somebody else's hillbilly setup. There's the other one right there, there's four. That looks like I can get a socket in on it. Oop. There's the bolt, lock washer, grab those. Next. Yeah, 
And here we are. High strength carburetor. And we'll cover that up with a rag. Looks like we need a new gasket on the bottom here. These are butterfly valves. Butterfly. Butterfly hood too. I think we may have no choice to get a new carburetor because that looks like that's a hole. Yeah, that's just rotted right through right there. It's weird, it's like gooey. Wah, wah, wah. I was wrong. Just a dirt dabber's nest. No hole. Good golly, Miss Holly. Holly Molly. Alright, I think there's our numbers we need right there for this carburetor to get a kit. There they are. Whoop. Focus, John. Focus. Alright, there they are. Alright, they're all loose. Alright, well I'm surprised. I thought it would look worse in there than it does. Now you do see there is some stuff in the bottom of the bowl. <sighs> that could cause some problems. The cork gasket there for the metering blocks all cracked up. Anyway, there's your float there. How's our needle moving? So this float bowl has fuel in it and uh, when it gets too much fuel in it, the float floats up and closes the valve right there that lets fuel in. But it don't don't look like that valve's moving. I don't know, it's it's fine, just got no fuel pressure on it. And I got all these screws loose in the bottom, that's for the accelerator pump. That diaphragm is stiff. There we go. I'll pull that out of there. Got some rust in here. Yeah, this this is stiff. Real stiff. Here it's cracking. And it should flex real good and it's all cracked and hard. I didn't actually go through and record the whole process of rebuilding the carburetor, but I did take a few pictures of while I was doing the rebuild, mainly for my own reference as far as putting it together. So this first picture here, you can see most of the main parts. Uh, on the left there, that is the governor assembly, or the governor control, bolts onto the side of the carburetor and the plate that covers that up. The main body of the carburetor right in the middle. The metering block is pulled off and you can see the gasket right on the front face of the body there and the float bowl. This is a close-up shot there of that gasket between the metering block and the body of the carburetor and you can see how that gasket has just shrunk to basically nothing. And then the next picture is me pulling it off and it's just falling apart. So then this next picture here you can see the old gasket on top of the brand new one and you can see how much it's shrunk. Um, we got a picture here of uh, the metering block. You can see the back side of the power valve. So then when we flip this over, I've already taken out the power valve, but I was, uh, again, this is a picture for reference, so I could see which gaskets go in there where the power valve threads in there. Then, of course, we've got the accelerator pump diaphragm. I've got that out just so I can see which way the diaphragm goes back in when I put it together. Always a good idea to take pictures like this. Then this is a better shot of the numbers on the choke tower that I needed to get a rebuild kit for this carburetor. The top number is an OEM part number, the middle number is the list number, and then the bottom number is a date code. I've got a list here, we're going to do a compression test, get some new spark plug wires, spark plugs, timing lights, two of them, old, try them, and we're going to do a compression test on this puppy and see what we get. Step one, remove all of the plugs, all eight of them, before you start testing. All plugs out, all right, let's see if I can do this one-handed, I'm sorry, two-handed, i got two here, let's see if this will do that. Let's try cylinder two. Well, that's 
pretty low. Take three. Let's try this again, see what we get. Oh. Alright, take four. Well, that's not very good. Alright, there's the results on our compression test. Give you a little more shadow there. Now looking good for cylinder eight, cylinder six, and cylinder two. We've got zero PSI on eight, so I'm thinking we got a valve problem if we have zero because if it was a hole in the piston <clears throat> or uh, bad rings, I think that would be. We'd have a lot more blow by on this thing when it runs. So we're going to pull the valve cover off today and see what we find. But first, I'm going to take the shot back and vacuum out some of this dirt and crap. So Big ol' vacuum leak. <laughs> 